I always, I'm always, I always reminded, I always reminded. Uh, my mom sometimes always used to tell me, she has to be cruel to be kind, and I think that's sometimes very true as a parent. You know, sometimes you know, if you just let your kid not do their homework, you know, you let your kid just, you know, uh, you know, just not have ambitions, then you're not doing them any favors. So I think when we drive for a very competitive economy, uh, we drive for for something that's quite merit-based. It, it may seem to be brutal, but it is actually, I think, really intended to make us all stronger. Because if we're not stronger, there's only so long that we can be protected. And I, I had no intention of trying to you know, undermine the Constitution. But I think, you know, I'm all for the advancement for Malays. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a Malay and I would like to see Malays advance. But Malays will advance if Malays are stronger. And, and you know, we need to ensure that we support Malays to have the same access to education and economic opportunities so that they can thrive. I think for that, for that reason, you know, since independence, you know, the government has focused on ensuring that you know, there's access to schools, that, you know, that we have availability of, of, of funding uh, for businesses, we have you know, availability of, 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 of jobs for Malays and then all races to thrive. Uh, and, and that really is, is, is critical if we want to be there at 2020, joining the ranks of, of, of high income. I think what I would like to say is that Talent Corp is definitely for merit, but in no way is that against the interests of Malays or any other race for that matter. I think if you even refer to you know, various documents uh, that have been issued by the government, by the Prime Minister, you know, if you're looking at the NEM Part 1, uh, looking at the 10 Malaysia Plan, you know, there's an articulation in terms of the advancement of the Bumiputra agenda, you know, recognising the passage of, of, of both times and developments. I think you know, you'll see in the descriptions the recognition that very much earlier on, you know, look at particularly post-independence and the 1970s, where your starting point in terms of uh, Bumiputra wealth and capabilities is starting at a very low base, that almost by necessity, you are having to then uh, drive things through very much an allocative uh, sort of uh, policy framework. But now, as, as, as you know, we have definitely been a lot more successful in terms of building up Bumiputra capabilities, both in terms of, you know, Profession, you know, Bumiputra professionals, uh, Bumiputra on, on entrepreneurs. Uh, that is where then the, the shift of the policy then again then has to be about building building on such, such success, success, and then ensuring that they are then competitive to become you know internationally competitive in their own right because that's the direction that the the country needs to take, mm -hmm. and and I think the the whole premise about. Uh, government policies to sort of trust to ensure that that Bumiputra trusts are not left behind uh, in the development of, of, of the nation. Um, and so they then then so then the policies that need to ensure that that they too are able to develop in line with that. And and so as as we move towards a high income economy, it is an incumbent that that we move move towards it uh, uh, more competitive you know, greater competitiveness greater, greater competitiveness.